could you give a quick preview for like what would be an example of an activity that would happen at a workshop like this? Because I think the, as you just said, the practice is the essential part to be able to to make it a part of your your habit as a leader. Uh, but could you just give a, a quick preview for what types of practice would be like available uh, in in this workshop? Absolutely. In the workshop, we'll go through a couple different exercises. Uh, the first one's going to be kind of a, a paired up nonviolent communication exercise. So we'll practice using that that jargon and that four step process of observation, feeling, need, and request to introspect and share our concerns with someone else in kind of an outbound way, as well as an inbound way. Solicit input from someone else and understand what's going on with them and, and collaborating closely to resolving and creating a plan of action. The second exercise that we'll walk through is kind of a three, three-person exercise. So we'll have one person who's a member of one team, one person who's a member of another team, and the two teams have some conflicting priorities and a kind of tense situation that's very much modeled after the real world experiences that we've all had and some of the larger tech companies that we have been at. Um, and, and there's a third party who is a manager of one of these two people trying to mediate the situation. And so we'll get a chance to see um, both the like one-on-one, hey, let's, let's practice talking about each other's emotions, as well as the, you know, here is a multi-party conflict in progress. How do we create a plan of action? And there's a little twist in there I threw in for, for, <laughs> for folks who are listening at home. Um, there is some secret information some of the parties have that the others don't. And so it's important <laughs> to develop the skills to solicit that information and not just expect people to offer it up right away. This must have been cathartic for you to create in pulling from your own experiences with some of these things. Uh, it's, <laughs> I'm not going to say it was a form of therapy, um, but but it was definitely a form of of intentional consideration, particularly you know as as I as I work here at One Signal to ensure that we have the kinds of environment where we can avoid the kinds of conflict that can occur, you know, in in a hyper growth startup if you you know scale without consideration. I love it. Well, so I know we want to jump into rapid fire questions, Jordan. The last question, I was hoping we might be able to link all of the from where we started to now. With the beginning, we talked about optimizing conflict. And so, and that's what you had mentioned was it, it wasn't just about what happens after conflict occurs, but it's also doing things to avoid conflict in the first place. Do you have maybe a way to summarize like something you could insert to avoid conflict in the first place? Yeah, I'll give you kind of the, the top line summary. And again, this like like feedback can become a you know multi multi series conversation. Um, but when it comes to avoiding conflict, the keys really are thinking about what are the decision making processes that exist. How do we make them legible? What are the power structures and 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 kind of a division of responsibility? Um, how do we make sure that that is mutually exclusive and, and comprehensively exhaustive so we're not missing anything and we don't have areas of overlap where people maybe step on each other's toes or are so afraid of stepping on each other's toes that their work doesn't get done? Um, and making decisions in the correct way and being intentional and legible about that is, is key. So folks know what to expect all along the way. They have references that they can go back to, documents that can say, okay, here's who owns this particular decision. Let me go talk to them, as opposed to kind of the, the um, situations that many folks end up in where, you know, there's no clear owner for this and it becomes essentially a, a point of continuous contention by all the people who need to manage it and there's no clear singularly responsible person who can be responsible for shepherding decisions around that particular area, whether that's people area or technical area. 